for joining today. I appreciate it. This is the IAC Acoustics webinar for NVH test facilities. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, as I mentioned, IAC Acoustics, I'm going to talk briefly today about uh, capabilities and a little bit of the fundamentals about how to design and uh, some considerations for construction and, and development and testing methods for NVH and acoustic test facilities. My name is Andrew Pulte. I'm the NVH and test facility sales manager at IAC Acoustics. I have a background with the nearly 13 years of NVH testing experience in vehicle for automotive with Honda and also with truck, uh, heavy truck construction bus vehicles with the commercial vehicle group. My focus is in acoustics. I have a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from Ohio State and a master of engineering in acoustics from Penn State University. There's a couple different types of rooms when it comes to acoustic testing, specifically for vehicles. Um, I don't know if anyone has, everyone has heard of anechoic rooms versus uh, reverberation rooms. What we're going to be talking about today is an anechoic room. So this is a type of room where you have a sound source inside. That sound source emits a noise or, or any sort of sound, and that sound, those, those sound pressure waves, get absorbed in the surface of the, of the enclosure. So when you're performing acoustic measurements, all you hear is the noise directly emitted from the sound source, rather than if you had a room with some reverberation or hard surfaces on the walls and ceilings, you may get some reflections uh, as well and could potentially contaminate your noise uh, measurements. Just a brief overview of IAC Acoustics and who we are. IAC Acoustics is a Catalyst Acoustics Group company, or, or CAG. So the Catalyst Acoustics Group is a conglomeration of companies focused on noise and vibration, uh, isolation and, and sound reduction equipment and, and facilities and supplies uh, for architectural and in the industrial um, areas as well. We have a very experienced team in the industrial side, uh, including Thomas Hines, who is our director with over 20 years of experience in, in IAC products. Ted Marquis is our sales manager with 21 plus years of experience for in-plant noise control. Um, our HVAC expert is Darren Riley, and we also have Ryan Wheeler, our industrial commercial sales manager, who focuses on barrier wall systems, and Kalina Winter, who's our power sport dyno sales uh, associate. The term NVH is almost exclusively used in vehicle transportation testing. Um, no, the NVH stands for noise, vibration, and harshness. And uh, the noise and vibration is a little bit more intuitive to understand, but harshness is typically um, linked to perception or the subjectiveness, the sound quality of, of noises and vibrations, specifically from uh, the interior or uh, close to the exterior of the vehicle. Um, so NVH testing is actually a very key part of vehicle development, and it has been for decades. It's driven a lot of innovation, drives uh, there a lot of investment. Um, there's there's a big competitive advantage even if you can get one to two db cabin noise quieter than your competition that's a huge advantage so in order to be able to provide these measurements rather than doing outdoor vehicle testing for for very repeatable measurements that it can you can compare data to for for years and decades worth of, of vehicle development a lot of automotive companies and transportation companies will have acoustic enclosures to do the testing indoors, um, and that includes chassis dynamometer, wheel dynamometer for fuel vehicle testing, as well as component testing. The advantage of using IAC's enclosures is that we have a very large selection of panels. Uh, we have a modular construction, kind of like a puzzle piece put together, so it's a very easy installation. Uh, we have a very high level of transmission loss, and we manufacture all of the components in here, including the panels, the steel detail, floors, uh, roof, and the doors, uh, especially. 
they they all have performance uh, rated performance for the panels and doors a very high level of sound transmission loss and if needed we have a high level of sound absorption as well so we can manufacture panels with uh, perforated steel for absorption on the inside of the enclosure and high transmission loss for the outside As I mentioned before, we have a, a large selection of panels depending on the needs for the specific application. Um, there's there's over 20 different panels that we can use. Um, this this is just a chart that shows the panel selection. There's a exponentially large number of options for doors as well. Um, we can match up panel performance and door performance to have something that's going to uh, meet any need that you might have. And all of our panel systems are four inch thick. Uh, panels. They can be made and modified if needed, but all of the performance for every one of these panels listed here is for a four inch thick system, uh, with the exception of the very bottom, the Gemini Noise Lock 2, uh, that's a double wall, the double wall system. The doors have a very wide range of acoustic performance. The STC or sound transmission class rating is a measure of how well sound is reflected uh, off of the enclosure or the panel or the door. Um, it it's essentially tells you how quiet it's going to be inside versus outside of the enclosure. Um, so you can see from STC 43 all the way up to STC 64 and an NIC or, or in the field measurement of 70 is able to be achieved. A few more photos of some doors just to show the wide array, uh, array of applications here. Um, not necessarily NVH and test enclosures, but uh, very we, we can offer doors from very small to very large and even kind of interesting photo here. There's a door within a door that's a, not a very common system, but we've done lots of these in the past. And some more examples of some doors. We have a couple of sliding doors. There's a very large automated sliding door here. Um, and then a smaller one up here on the upper left corner. One of the options for the anechoic testing facilities, uh, hemi anechoic testing facilities specifically, is air cooling. A lot of times in vehicles, we need to be able to cool down the vehicle itself and also the chassis roller dyno that may be under the crown. So there's a, here's an example of an embedded air cooled system that you can lift up and, and put down uh, whatever the case may be depending on the type of test that you might have. And of course the bread and butter of an anechoic system usually the first thing you notice when you walk into one of these rooms is, is all of these triangular wedges. So the uh, wedges that we offer is a metadyne anechoic lining. This can be in uh, fiberglass with perforated steel. You can also offer it in foam. Um, we have a, a very large range of cutoff frequencies from uh, 50 hertz all the way up to 500 hertz are some of the applications, and, and we can even go lower or higher than that depending on any, uh, any specific custom needs that you might have. Usually, for a hemianechoic room, the wedges, not always, but usually the wedges are placed all along the walls and the ceiling. Um, we have seen applications in other uh, systems where that may be a little bit different. But so this this is an example of a foam wedge on the ceiling and the, and the walls. This is a, a much shorter, smaller wedge, so this has a higher frequency cutoff. Uh, and then you have single wedge design as well here, where you have a, a lower frequency cutoff because the wedge is a bit larger. We offer a uh, full turnkey solution for your entire project. So we can provide just the enclosure or we can even offer a full solution for the entire structure. Um, this is a, an example of a very large hemianechoic facility for um, large, large uh, semi-truck testing uh, with exhaust vents in here. Uh, these wedges are up to 60 inches long, possibly a little more with the, uh, the HVAC. Uh, this particular room offers a, all the way down to a 50 hertz uh, cutoff frequency. And you can see there's a, a, a room, uh, a circle around here that shows where the, the uh, optimal free field measurement is achieved. It's very large.
some of the options and in, in standard um, standard items that we include in our enclosures include wedge baskets if the uh, if the room is very large and the doors are very large we'll have a, a whole separate structure to cover up the doors um, so our, our IAC doors obviously have a very high sound transmission loss if you want absorption on the inside we'll have to add an anechoic wedges as, on a separate door um, to be able to cover up the the flat door so you have a full range of absorption pass-through sleeves uh, a huge selection of windows are, are offered as well with high sound transmission loss uh, we can include wheel dynamometers either underground or, or on the surface level lighting electrical uh, we offer led lighting overhead lighting for um, for all of the uh, enclosure sizes possible and any kind of penetration you might need for services like fire suppression systems The big advantage of having a hemi anechoic or, or fully anechoic room is it is a very repeatable result. As I mentioned before, uh, a lot of automotive companies or, or transportation companies in general, um, they want very repeatable results. And having an enclosure in, inside in one facility with a very consistent construction is going to offer that. They are lab rated and performance tested. We have we, we have the option to have third party come in and perform testing to specific standards such as ISO 3744 or 3745 to measure the repeatability of your specific room. They are uh, we also offer the versatile set of panel configurations and a uh, big advantage here is that we have performance data for transmission loss all the way down to 63 hertz and up to 8 kilohertz band range. Here's just another example of an enclosure. You can see the anechoic wedges here, and uh, there's a, a nice viewing window here that, that allows you to see the test as it's going. Um, we also, if, if you don't want to have any windows, uh, obviously we can offer um, penetration so you can have pass throughs with a camera um, to allow a fully uh, absorbing wall if needed. This one in particular has a wheel dynamometer underneath the ground, uh, underneath the, in, in a pit. So that way the surface is still nice and flat on the bottom um, while still being able to um, test the vehicle at an optimal speed. And you can see over here, this is the air-cooled unit as well. This particular one doesn't move down or up. It's, it's stationary. Um, so this particular application, they're performing this, you know, this kind of test all the time where they constantly need the air cooling. I've talked about hemi-anechoic and fully anechoic rooms, so let me just go back a slide. You can see here that the acoustic treatment is on the walls and it's going to be on the ceiling as well, but not on the floor. The floor in a hemi-anechoic room is typically flat and it's made out of hard concrete or steel. Um, a lot of times there's a bed plate on the floor. For a fully anechoic room, you have acoustic treatment on all six surfaces, so that means all four walls, the ceiling, and the floor. Um, usually for a fully anechoic room, you're able to get more repeatable results. Um, the, the floor is typically made out of the same construction as the walls and the ceiling on, on the wedges. Um, and then there's a, a floor grating on the top. Either that can, that can be uh, steel or aluminum grating, or it can be uh, cables, taut cables. Um, and this allows, again, this fully anechoic room allows for a very predictable result and, and typically these are tested with a third party to ISO 3745, 3744, or 26101. There's a couple more examples. Um, I think I mentioned earlier that usually in a hemianechoic room, a lot of times you'll see the uh, triangular wedges, but not always. And, and this is an application where you have uh, flat absorbing panels on the sides, and then you have triangular wedges on the top. Um, so really, we, we can custom design and build this based on any specific application. This one's interesting, too, because you can see there's actually a crane in here. Um, so we can test the, the repeatability of the room with or before the crane's installed and after to see. Um, typically, there's not a, whole lot of, uh, not a whole lot of difference between the two. Sometimes if these cranes are large or if there's a large flat surface, you may have to treat it separately. 
This is a pretty neat picture of a pass-by chamber. This is a pretty large motorcycle pass-by chamber. You can see that there's a huge amount of microphones set along each side here, and the motorcycle is driven from one side of the room to the other to measure what is the, uh, the pass-by noise. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of rules and, and regulations regarding pass-by noise to be able to kind of reduce that sound as much as possible in, in um, er, you know, typical urban and, and neighborhood type of environments. To, there's a lot of noise control um, that's required. Some other applications, we have shake and rattle test chambers. Uh, this is not necessarily anechoic, but this is a very absorbing room um, where there's a four post shaker that moves a vehicle up and down. And you can see that the, uh, each vehicle tire is, is on an individual post, uh, trying to simulate what kind of, to, to, to move the vehicle up and down as much as possible to get a buzz squeaks and rattles. And, and measure those. You can usually set up a microphone and accelerometers inside the vehicle to measure that. You can also do individual component or, or sub-assembly testing if you don't need to test the entire vehicle. Um, we've, we've also offered enclosures for buzz, squeak, and rattle of seats, for example. This, this particular example is a heavy truck and construction seat test rig and um, we, we work in partnership with uh, dynamometer and, and specific uh, quiet shaker suppliers to to offer a full turnkey solution here's a pretty custom custom design uh, wheel dynamometer enclosures uh, so you can see this is for a full vehicle uh, i mentioned before a lot of times you'll see bed plates on on the bottom and so these these dynamometer uh, kind of cells can be moved around based on the wheel, uh, the wheel diameter, wheel hub uh, length. Uh, it, this can test a variety of vehicles, and they can all move around independently. These four individual enclosures keep the noise, dynamometer noise, uh, as quiet as possible, so that you can um, focus on measuring any specific vehicle noises that you might be interested in. So a couple more photos of uh, fully anechoic rooms. Um, this one in particular on the left is for a seat. Uh, you can see that they are measuring some sort of sound power measurement. Um, there's a large array of, of uh, transducers around the entire seat that they're measuring. Um, so this is for some sort of seat or, or audio equipment. A uh, fairly common application is engine noise test cells. Uh, this this is kind of neat because you can see that this is not a uh, just a tri or a rectangular room, but this has some uh, some different shaped walls to it. Uh, so it's it's really all about the wedge layout and and making sure we can maximize surface area for sound absorption to maintain a high level of repeatability. Um, there's there's a perforate steel flooring down here, grating down here. This looks like it may be a fully anechoic chamber and even the test cell dynamometer itself has some um, so there's a combination of different types of materials to maximize the sound absorption and, and maximize your your efficiency minimize the the variance in the measurements there's another example of a test cell this particular one shows an engine with a pass-through through the anechoic facility so we offer pass-throughs as well if the, if the dynamometer is air-cooled, for example, and it makes a lot of noise. Um, we can ha actually have the dynamometer outside of the enclosure and offer a, a very quiet pass-through to allow just the drive shaft to come through and perform the acoustic measurements inside. A lot of smaller, fully anechoic rooms are designed for uh, audio and um, Test telemarket or te telecommunications industry uh, for small component testing. Uh, if if you have just a, a small tabletop system, or you have uh, a lot of times you'll see a, a post or a little microphone or a speaker stand in the middle of the enclosure um, for for measuring little small device uh, communication device testing. This particular example on the right is using a foam metadyne foam wedge. If you're able to reach our website, iacacoustics.com, 
um, check out the test facility section. There's a, some good information in here um, on automotive test chambers and NVH test chambers. There's also a couple different areas for anechoic rooms and reverberation rooms and some general information and knowledge in there. Uh, it's, it's really interesting. Okay, thanks to everyone for joining today. I appreciate it. Um, I can be reached out at apulte at iacacoustics.com. My, my contact information is here. Um, if there are any questions, we have, it looks like we have a few minutes left. I, I know I was going a little quickly. If there are any questions or anything, feel free to um, type them in the chat window or, or reach out to me later if, if something comes up later. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll give it a minute or two if there's any questions that pop up. Okay, here, there's a question about repeatability. Um, what's the difference be in repeatability between a hemi-anechoic and a fully anechoic? Okay, that's, that's a good question. So the, the um, ISO standards, 3744 and 3745, um, they have different requirements for repeatability. Usually, uh, it, it really depends. I know that's not a, not a great answer, but it really depends on the frequency band. Um, so for example, low frequencies like uh, 100 hertz or 200, hertz, uh, 250 hertz octave band, you have a repeatability uh, for fully anechoic rooms of, uh, I think it's three or four dB, um, but that becomes much tighter at the higher frequencies. Um, so around the the frequency range where, where people typically pick up sounds a little better from 1000 to 4000 hertz, that repeatability has to be closer within one or two dB. Now, for hemianechoic rooms, the repeatability is a little uh, a little looser because you have that reflecting surface to be usually on the floor. Um, there, there's a lot of reasons. Uh, there, there's kind of a, a precision grade measurement in a fully anechoic room versus the engineering grade measurement in a hemianechoic room. Um, there's there's uh, cost. There's there's functionality. Uh, a lot of times it's just not feasible to get a fully anechoic room because you need to test something that's very heavy and your uh, steel grating or your or your cable floor may not be able to support that load. That's a good question. Are there any more? Okay, I'm not seeing any additional questions in here. So again, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, my email and phone number is here. Uh, if you'd like a copy of this presentation, just let me know. I look forward to hearing with you and thanks again for attending the webinar. Have a good day.